Hi, welcome back to my channel. I'm Miriam Manzo. I've been feeling a little under the weather the last couple of days. So as I often do, I bring my work up here to the bedroom so that I'm away from the rest of the family. One of the files I've been working on is a new client and we are redoing his master bedroom. And I started to think over the last couple of days, what are the mistakes that I typically see that are preventing your home from having a truly luxurious look and feel? So today that's what we're going to do. We're going to talk about some of the biggest mistakes that I see in bedrooms and how you can fix them. The first is the bed size. Yes, it does matter. One of the things I notice often is that people are trying to um, cram a too large bed into a too small space. You've heard me say before that there should be a minimum of 30 to 36 inches all around the bed. This is both for comfort of walking as well as for being able to do the bed. I often see people cram a bed that is pushed up against one wall and I know there are situations where really you have no choice to, but to do that. But most bedrooms you have the choice and it's simply that you're choosing too large a bed for that size bedroom. The other mistake I see is with nightstands. So in this particular client's bedroom, he actually has a king size bed, but then his nightstands are only about 14 inches wide. They're not scaled properly, both to the bed and to the space available. So when choosing your nightstands, you really want to be able to fill the space on either side of the bed. Now for me, a nightstand is an uber important part of my bedroom as I use it for so many things. One of the things that I look for is first of all the height. The height of your nightstand should match the height of your bed and if you're going to go higher it should be no more than about two or three inches higher than your mattress. For me, a drawer is really important. I like to keep pens and room sprays and uh, extra books. My converters all go into a drawer. And then I love to read in bed at night. So I have magazines and books that come up with me or stay in my bedroom all the time. So in my own room, I selected a nightstand that has an opening at the bottom. Now, I know space is sometimes tight as well as budget, but there are so many options to choosing a nightstand. You can go from uh, something as simple as a lac shelf if there is a um, tight space. These are really simple and economical uh, options for a nightstand from Ikea. You can also choose an Ikea piece and have it customized. Um, there's so many fabulous content creators doing IT Ikea hacks. One of the ways I love to keep within the budget but still bring style to a bedroom is to um, buy second hand. And don't be afraid or don't um, limit yourself when you're seeing secondhand pieces to thinking that it has to be used as bought. A can of spray paint goes a long way as well as uh, wallpaper, adding extra wood, adding new knobs. There's so many ways to customize your nightstand. For my own personal nightstand, I found a style that I loved that was the right size, but I didn't like the finish it was in. So I purchased it and then I did my own paint finish on it, including having the interior of the opening done in a brass finish. I absolutely love that. The next thing preventing your room from having a luxe look is a too slim mattress. Really, to get that luxe look, you want to get a pillow top mattress. It's really one of the most important pieces in your room because you're spending every night on it. So what I've had clients do who have not purchased a pillow top mattress is to buy a pillow top um, edition that you can get off of Amazon. I'll leave the link for that. Um, that you just add to your mattress and it really gives it a more comfortable as well as luxe look. And then arguably one of the most important features of a bedroom is the linens. The biggest mistake I see people making is they're buying matched sets or cheaper quality linens when this does not have to be the case. 
Case in point, Brooklinen Sheets. This is a company whose ethos is offering a simple product for a fair price that will help elevate your home. And it is truly a luxury product. They sell them in individual pieces, but also as uh, bundle sets. So they have the classic hardcore bundle, which is a 270 thread count sheet. And then here on my bed, you see the Lux Hardcore set. So this is 480 thread count. And what I love about their bundles is that you are getting an extra set of pillowcases. You get your fitted sheet, your top sheet, and your duvet cover all for 25% off. So it makes an already really well-priced luxury sheet set even more affordable. And it comes in over 20 colors with over 100,000 reviews for this product. And if you use the code Miriam M now, you can get $20 off your $100 purchase. This is a great way to help elevate not only the look of your bedroom, but also the quality of sleep you're going to enjoy with these sheets. In staying with the bed, I often see the bed being placed on the wrong wall in a room. This is really important. Ideally, you should be facing the door into your room. So either you should have the bed across from the door or in a position like in my room where when I'm lying in bed, I can see anybody walking into the room. The one thing that I notice a lot of people, and sometimes they don't have a choice, is they put the bed in front of their window. And again, sometimes I get it, there isn't a choice. But when that is the case, you should be selecting a low slung and low profile bed. You want to try not to block the natural light coming in through the windows. And as a matter of fact, if you could pick a headboard, um, for example, something that is a wrought iron or an open weave headboard, that would help. Um, with that placement. This leads us to another one of the most frustrating for me mistakes that I see, which is a dimly lit room or a room that doesn't have enough light. Now, when we are starting from scratch, we light in layers. We do pot lights, we do a ceiling fixture, we do lamps or sconces, um, and then I even build in night lights into many of the rooms we design. But when you are coming into a situation where you're inheriting that room, very often you're going to find that there is only a ceiling fixture. So, first thing to do is make sure that that ceiling fixture is sized properly for the room itself. How do we do that? You take the width and length of the room, for example, a 10 by 10 room would mean you should have the ideal size for your chandelier or light fixture be 20 inches. And I would always rather go um, a, scaled a little too big rather than a little too small. And then keep in mind your ceiling height. You would ideally like a um, clearance of at least 80 to 84 inches to the bottom of your light fixture. Now, if it hangs over a bed, you could probably cheat that to about 78 inches, but you don't want it to be any lower than that. Light bulbs are very important. Again, I see so many people with too cool a light bulb, not just in the bedroom, in all rooms, but I find it particularly offensive when it's too cool a light bulb. It winds up giving a very institutional look and not a luxurious look to your bedroom. I recommend to my clients that you stick with a 3000K to a 3500K at the highest. Now, if we go back to our uh, nightstands, if they are on the smaller size, consider doing a wall sconce rather than a table lamp for your bedside lighting. There are so many sconces that you can buy that either have a wire coming down that plug in that allow you to um, put that sconce without bringing an electrician in. 
And now there's some fabulous light bulbs that you can put in that are remote operated. So again, you don't need an electrician. And if you are designing the room from the um, ground up or renovating that room, consider a pendant hanging from a ceiling so that that smaller nightstand still has ample room for the things that you need. Another one of the details that is preventing your room from having a luxurious feel is the color of the bedroom itself. The bedroom is not a place for bold color. This is supposed to be a room that is soothing, um, where you go to uh, recharge, not to re-energize necessarily. There's a bit of a difference. Um, so the colors you should be looking to should be more um, soft, more natural, more organic, rather than bold. If you do love brighter colors or bolder colors, pick a piece of art and then a couple of pillows that give you that pop of color you're looking for. But for me, the walls should be kept very neutral. Um, a lighter color if you're looking for an airier bedroom feel, and then darker if you're looking for a moodier bedroom feel. And then don't forget to bring in contrast. Now, if that contrast isn't in the color itself, then you should be incorporating contrast in some textures. And this helps to give you a warm, inviting, and cozy look to the bedroom. So beyond color, the next mistake I see is just too much visual clutter. There are too many pillows on a bed. Yes, there is such a thing, and that is coming from a woman. You don't need to have the bed piled with pillows. In our stagings, if you go back and take a look at some of our videos, we like to pile our pillows up too high and then just do a um, couple of throw pillows in front of them. That's the easiest way to bring a little bit of color uh, to the bedroom while keeping it from looking like you really can't even jump in the bed because you're going to be fighting for space with your pillows. And then your nightstands. Again, this goes back to what I said about finding a nightstand with a drawer. Um, I've, I've been in clients' houses where they have 30 bottles of um, prescription drugs and vitamins on their nightstand because they like to have it at hand so they remember to take it. But there's no reason that that clutter has to be on the nightstand. It should be either in a drawer or in a box underneath the nightstand um, if it's a floating shelf situation. The visual clutter is what's stopping you from truly relaxing when you go to sleep. Um, but it's also, like I said, preventing you from having that luxurious look. Too much furniture is also a problem that I've seen. I know that for a lot of you, space is at a premium and that storage is important. But if you're going to need that much storage, then think vertical. There's nothing for me worse than seeing a dresser with another high boy next to it. Eliminate both of them and go with a armoire. Again, Ikea has some fabulous uh, pieces that you can customize so that it looks like a armoire in your space. Um, and this will give you the vertical space you need for storage while decluttering the room. And if you have a TV in the room, I prefer it to be hidden. In my own bedroom, I designed this unit that houses storage at the bottom, display across the top, and then I've got my TV behind closed doors so that I only see it when I actually want to watch TV. One of the big mistakes I see is the drapery not being both properly sized as well as uh, having the proper function. So you want to do your windows in layers. And this is great news for uh, if you're budget conscious because you can always add to the layers as budget becomes available. Start with a really good quality roller blind or a silhouette blind. And if you're the type of person that needs a room to be completely black in order to sleep, make sure you're getting a room darkening blind and then add layers. In my own bedroom, again, you can see I've gone with shears. I don't need to have the room to be dark to fall asleep. And more importantly, I like to wake up with the first light, so I don't want to be uh, in pitch black so that I don't know what time it is. So I've got shears. 
And the last layer and our favorite here at MMI are the drapery panels. Now we often do these as a side panel, meaning they are non-functional, but they are bringing in the color pattern or texture into our room that are tying our different design elements together. Now, one of the biggest mistakes I see here is that the panel is too narrow. So I always advise to use at least a panel and a half on the side of uh, each window so that you get a nice luxurious feel. And then the other mistake are doing drapery panels that are not long enough. You want to take that rod as close to the ceiling as possible and you want the bottom of the drapery to just kiss the floor and this is going to give you that luxurious look everybody's after. And then the final mistake that is detracting from having a truly luxurious look is a too small area rug. Now if you're the type of person that wants to be able to step out of bed and onto a um, carpet, then you want to make sure that that carpet comes up to the nightstand uh, and starts about three or four inches in front of the nightstand. And then I always like it to be as wide as the nightstand. So in other words, if your nightstand is three feet wide um, on either side of the bed, you want to make sure the carpet is three feet wide on either side of the bed. This will help um, give the room a larger look and feel, um, as well as giving you the most amount of space to walk on. The worst thing is when you feel like you're, you've got only a foot of space to walk on or you're going to fall off that area rug. And then bring it as far forward as you can. So if you have a dresser in front of your bed, I suggest you take the carpet to three or four inches in front of the dresser. So if you're going to go with a carpet, know the area that you want to have that carpet on and really size appropriately to give you that luxurious feel. Don't forget to subscribe, like, leave a comment and share this video and click the bell icon to be notified of future videos. And then I'm going to leave the links to some of our other videos where we talk more in depth about things like drapery, lighting, choosing your bedroom styles. But I hope this video was helpful for you to have all the information on creating a luxurious space and correcting some of those mistakes you may be making that are preventing you from having a luxurious bedroom. And don't forget to use code Miriam M to get $20 off your $100 purchase with Brooklinen. I guarantee you'll be happy you did. Thanks for watching. I'm Miriam Manzo.